is Dr. Aidan Elliott and this is The Complete Guide to Shakespeare. Welcome to this video on Shakespeare's tragedy, Othello. In the next few minutes I'll use just ten quotes to help you get an understanding of the main themes of the play. Our first quote is spoken by Iago, one of the greatest and most enigmatic of Shakespeare's characters. He says, I am not what I am. Now, at one level, this is a very straightforward phrase. Iago is telling Rodrigo that he's not the person he appears to be, that he's putting on an appearance. But it also adds dramatic irony to much of the play, because we always know that he doesn't mean what he says. In addition, the revelations about Iago's intentions at the start of the play, the story of being passed over for promotion, the idea that Othello has had an affair with his wife, Emilia, and the suggestion that Cassio is not a proper soldier, shape the way we perceive events. This is an example of something called the primacy effect and makes us empathise with Iago, even though we know he's doing reprehensible things. The second quote is also from Iago. Even now, now, very now, an old black ram is tupping your white you. This is, in part, a racist statement, the simple juxtaposition of black and white. And it's just one of a series of such statements the characters make. But also note that a black sheep is a rarity, as Othello is himself, a black man in a mostly white society. And the term black sheep represents an outcast who's done something wrong, the black sheep of the family. Also note the way Iago uses language here. The repetition of now, now, very now suggests the idea that Othello and Desdemona are having sex right now, at this very moment. This is a technique that Iago employs throughout the play, repetition of words and using the present tense to put ideas into the characters' heads, making them seem more real and more immediate. Quote 3. So please, your grace... My ancient, a man he is of honesty and trust. These lines are spoken by Othello as he introduces Iago to the Duke in Venice. The Duke is called Your Grace and Iago is called My Ancient. This quote illustrates the degree to which Othello is already being deceived by Iago's seemingly honest behaviour. Also, look out for the frequent repetition of honest or honesty. In Othello, these words are used 49 times whereas on average the words appear just ten times in the rest of Shakespeare's plays. Again, most of these uses of honesty are ironic in this play, because we know Iago is far from the honest person the other characters take him to be. Quote 4 Look to her more, if thou hast eyes to see. She has deceived her father and made thee. Although it is Iago who eventually turns Othello against Desdemona, it is her father that first draws attention to her being untrustworthy. She's deceived him by secretly running away with Othello. These lines may well place the idea of her being unfaithful in Iago's mind for him to use later with Othello. And the words may also help make it easier for Othello to believe Iago's story. She's done it once. She may do it again. Quote 5. One of the most famous in all of Shakespeare's plays. Oh, beware, my lord of jealousy. It is the green-eyed monster which doth mock the meat it feeds on. By this stage in the play, Iago has suggested to Othello that Desdemona has been having a relationship with Michael Cassio. Now, on one level, Iago is warning Othello that jealousy is an uncontrollable monster that will consume him. But on another level, these lines could be about Iago himself. He himself is jealous because he thinks his wife Amelia has slept with Othello. And so Iago could be seen as the monster who will eventually consume Othello through his manoeuvrings. Quote 6. Not poppy nor mandragora nor all the drowsy syrups of the world shall ever medicine thee to that sweet sleep which thou owedst yesterday. The quote shows us the extent to which Iago is enjoying the effect he's having on Othello. The stress on the word all in line two 
reinforces the idea that there are no remedies in the entire world that can restore Othello to his previous happy state. Also notice that the noun medicine is turned into a verb, making it more active and powerful. A lack of sleep is often used in Shakespeare as a sign of discontent, worry or guilt. Quote 7. I think my wife be honest and think she is not. I think that thou art just and think thou art not. This quote comes at a turning point in the middle of the play, Act 3, Scene 3. Note the way that the lines are virtually identical and set up a key decision that Othello must take. Who does he believe? Desdemona or Iago? Othello's decision here will be crucial, and his erroneous decision to believe the dishonest Iago is the step that leads to the tragic ending. But it is the line's delicate balance here which is so remarkable. A perfectly balanced line at a crucial point in the play. Quote 8, another very famous quote. Yet she must die, else she'll betray more men, put out the light, and then put out the light. These two lines reflect the way that Othello's snuffing out a candle flame, the light, but then intends to snuff out Desdemona's life, or her inner spiritual light, in the same fashion. These lines are horrifying in their simplicity and brutality. A human life extinguished as easily as a candle flame. You might also note his reasoning. He's killing her because she might betray other men in the future. It's a very weak rationale, and we must surely conclude that he doesn't really believe it himself. Quote 9. Demand me nothing. What you know, you know. From this time forth I never will speak word. These are the lines that have given Iago a place in theatre history. Using his customary repetition, what you know, you know, he now refuses to utter another word. This, of course, has ensured that his motivations have been a constant source of mystery for 400 years. And why some of you will have been asked questions at school, such as, is Iago evil? Quote 10. Then must you speak of one that loved not wisely, but too well. This quote, in my opinion, shows the degree to which Othello is confused. Here he seems to suggest that he loved Desdemona too well, suggesting that he was too trusting. But in fact, we might see that his actions have been directed to protecting his reputation. As the husband of an unfaithful wife, he has committed what is, in effect, an honour killing. So, do look out for some of these features as you read, watch and study the play. And I hope this brief video has given you some new insights that will help you to get greater enjoyment from Shakespeare's Othello. Give a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and subscribe now so that you never miss any of my future posts.